welcome, welcome to Retrieve. Retrieve is your companion series to the new catechism. Yep, that's what it is. Retrieve aims to retrieve, to recapture those life experiences that are essential for an understanding of the proposal, the discourse of evangelization, the discourse of the faith, the proposal made to us to believe and follow. Every show of this series is brought to you by a word. Today's word is life, life. Faith is a stand, a stand about reality, about the world in which we live. The people who believe what the creed says, if they are logical, will be different from the people who do not believe what it says, if they are logical. Totally different stand about life. For example, time to look at our paintings. The paintings you see around me, they didn't do, put themselves together. There was no some kind of cosmic logic that the painter grasped and put on the canvas, such that if that painter was dead or, or, or maybe had too much to eat that day, or too much to drink, then another one would have grasped that logic and put together that same painting. No, no, no. Each one of them is a creative act. It need not have existed. It comes out of nothing at all. Each one of them is new. Each work of art is new. It is not necessary. The birth of a human person, the same thing happens. That human being never existed before. That human being is not the inevitable result of some kind of cosmic evolution. It's a new reality. Never existed before. There will never be another such person again. The believer believes in newness, newness of life. Love creates newness. God's love creates out of nothing. And when human love is cooperating with that divine love, it also creates out of nothing. Those paintings are created out of nothing. This by way of an introduction to the last articles of the Creed. In the Catechism, section 2, chapter 3, articles 8 to 12. We've said all of reality owes its origin to the love between the Father and the Son. God is three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Today we want to reflect on the Spirit's role in this mystery. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Creed says. The Spirit exists because Jesus exists and Jesus is never separate from the Father and the Spirit. How does the Spirit exist in a non-divine world? Well, first of all, the Spirit is the one that sustains, that is the ground of the possibility for it all, because it is that love between the two. The Spirit sustains the risk of creation. And the 
Spirit certainly sustains the work of redemption. That enormous distancing between the Father and the Son who travels all the way to sin, that stretch on the unity of the Trinity, it's like a rubber band, you know. The Spirit is that strength that sustains it. So that, so that redemption can take place. All the distancing in love for the sake of love between the Father and the Son is sustained by the Spirit. The first one, as I said, is creation itself. Creation out of nothing. At the beginning, and each time that happens, each time a new human being is born, each time a painting is drawn, there's a creation out of nothing. Each time music is composed or even played with the genius of an artist, the spirit sustains all of that creation out of nothing that originates in the love between the Father and the Son. The spirit sustains creation the spirit that hovered over the waters. Lovely stuff. The spirit sustains the incarnation itself. That distancing. The spirit is the one the angel said to Mary. The spirit of the Most High will come over you. Over what? Over nothing. Mary's virginity is not a doctrine about her sexuality. It is about her poverty of her nothing. The incarnation is a creation out of nothing. Those that would deny Mary's virginity are denying the pure grace of love that creates out of nothing. She did nothing but offer the poverty of her pure faith. That was the fertile ground for the spirit to sustain the great and astounding miracle of the creation of the humanity of Jesus Christ, the incarnation of the eternal Son. Each moment of the life of Jesus, it is the spirit that is sustaining. The spirit of the Lord was over him. At each moment of his growth, of his ministry, of his words, there is not a moment in which the spirit is not over Jesus. Especially that moment of supreme distancing on the cross. The Spirit is over Jesus when he identifies himself with the sin of the world. At that moment, the final moment when the yes is pronounced, he said he handed over his Spirit. The Spirit on the cross, it's a very beautiful topic for meditation. Of course, after every time the cross becomes an event bringing about the forgiveness of sins, these are forgiven through the Spirit. You see, in the creed, the last thing you say you believe in is the Holy Spirit. In English, Unfortunately, we have to put an article and say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, in the, in the forgiveness of sin, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion, however it goes. In, 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 in not so. The last thing you believe in is the Holy Spirit. In the original creed, you do not believe, say, in the forgiveness of sins. You believe the forgiveness of sins. You believe that reality exists, 
because it's part of your belief in the Holy Spirit. Everything that follows the Holy Spirit in the Creed, and the New Catechism tells you that, is a consequence, it's an expression of the work, the presence, of the existence of the Holy Spirit in the fallen and redeemed world. So, the forgiveness of sins, out of nothing, every single time, the Spirit, God's love, creates out of nothing. That's why the forgiveness of sin is out of nothing. Hey, it's not the fruit of repentance. No amount of repentance can earn the forgiveness of sins. Repentance opens you to accept it. But you are forgiven, period, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Repentance opens you to the Spirit. It's like Mary's faith, so that there can be the work, the fruits of it in you, the fruits of the forgiveness. We don't earn our forgiveness. Forgiveness is out of nothing, because love is out of nothing. Love just gives. There's no purpose in that sense. The resurrection of the body. The victory of love over the flesh. The new body, it's called in the Bible what? The spiritual body. It doesn't mean that it's immaterial. It doesn't make any sense. If it's a body, it's material. But it is a spiritual matter. Weird. Weird stuff. We don't think like that. Because of the, our influence inheriting Greek philosophy, we separate the spirit from matter. We make spirit totally immaterial, matter material. The Bible doesn't think that way. It is quite shamelessly talks about the spiritual body. And even, in some places, the bodily spirit. Weird stuff. But it's, very, it's great. Because the body of the resurrection is a creation out of nothing. Because our, our other body really dies. Hey, open up a grave, take a look. Gone. Out of that nothing. That person has again a body, a spiritual body. The resurrection is therefore an act of love. It is love bringing about the, the, the life of a body out of nothing. You see, this is what's wrong with reincarnation. A person who believes in the creed, is not only not tempted by the reincarnation, it's disgusted by it. We're back at the beginning, attitudes about life. So what reincarnation, oh my God, is the whole thing all over again. It's that eternal process again, again, the possibilities that were there before. I don't care if I come back as a kangaroo or, or, or much thinner. No, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Hey, listen. Death is death. It's not, you know, yes, there is new life and we don't disappear. But we don't disappear because of the creative act of the Spirit that links us always to Jesus Christ. But we end. We die. It's not some kind of like easy layover. Uh, it is, it is going to nothing, so that out of nothing, that love which is stronger than death can create us, can recreate us by the same power that created us, the power of the Spirit, and grant us now a spiritual body on the other side of sin. Reincarnation belongs to a world where love is not possible, where there is no such thing. It belongs not to a world of love, but to a world of logic. You choose what you like.
You live by logic, okay. And come back as a cat or a dog, I don't care. But I don't live by logic. <laughs> I'm here, am I not? I live by love. In the union between a man and a woman, the act of love that characterizes the existence of man, that love is possible because of the spirit. It is the spirit that creates a new reality between these two separate individuals. It is the spirit of Jesus, the spirit between the Father and the Son, engaged in this recreation as the spirit was in creation, making this a world of love, a home of love. Of course, we've mentioned already, when within this union, there is a new person, clearly, the Spirit has brought this about, a new incarnation, a new image of the Father's Son, a new fruit of the love between the Father and the Son now emerges by the power of the Spirit from the love between a man and a woman. Yes, that's how the spirit exists in the resurrection of the body, all the way to eternal life, the final communion and eternal life. Remember the catechism began with eternal life. Eternal life, Father, is knowing you and the one whom you have sent. Eternal life, hey, it's the life of the Spirit. It's the life of the Spirit, the knowledge and the love of the Father and the one whom he has sent. The life of the Spirit that creates new, newness of life.